Okay. So, hello everyone. Good morning. So, I hope I'm audible to online people. Yes, sir. Okay, all right. So, today we are going to discuss about the role of editorial discussion classes, current affairs, and also we are going to discuss about how to prepare science and technology. Okay. So, we are going to discuss these topics one by one. And when we discuss about how to prepare science and technology, I will talk about the syllabus of science and technology in detail. Then we will discuss about uh, like, you know, the trend in which UPSC is asking question in terms of the changes in the number of questions that they are asking in prelims and mains over the years. And we will also look into the you know, nature of questions that are being asked nowadays. Okay? So there has been a change in the pattern in which UPSC has been asking question from last many years. So we will understand that part. And we will also look into you know, previous year questions from means point of view. We will understand like when it comes to preparing for science and technology, how you should orient your preparation. Should you orient your preparation towards prelims only or towards means only or it should be an integrated approach. We are going to discuss all of it so that like in future lectures when, when you will be having science and technology lectures, that time you will have a detailed understanding like you know how to go about preparing science and technology. All right. So uh, let us quickly start with you know science and technology per, uh, part first. We will discuss about this particular thing and later on we will discuss about our own program which is editorial discussion classes in detail. All right. So now if we talk about science and technology, you know like science and technology is one of the core areas when it comes to the prelims examination and also for the means exam. In prelims, like you know, uh, if you see the syllabus, there is a specific point in prelims, you know, GS paper one syllabus that says general science. So just two keywords they have used in the syllabus, right? They have mentioned general science. But like when we talk about the means exam, when we talk about the, uh, the science and technology portion in means exam, it's a part of general studies paper three. Okay. In GS paper three, we have multiple sections. One of the section is Indian economy. Second section is, you know, science and technology. Third section is environment and ecology. Then we have disaster management as well. And apart from this, we have internal security as a, you know, portion in GS paper three. So in GS paper three, we have five, you know, sub divisions of syllabus, economy, science and technology, environment and ecology, disaster management, and internal security right so science and technology is one of the key areas for the means exam also and for the prelims exam okay so before we proceed further can anyone tell me how many questions are asked by upsc in gs paper one in prelims exam how many questions total 100 questions right and in gs paper three if we talk about means exam how many questions do they ask generally no, GS paper 3, the entire paper of mains exam, 20 questions, right? So if I talk about that 100 questions in GS paper 1 in prelims exam and 20 questions in GS paper uh, 3 in mains exam, right? Out of the 100 questions, if you see year on year, the number of questions that are coming from science and technology area has been increasing. There is a you know, sharp increase in the number of questions. Nowadays, if you open the syllabus and if you relate, I mean like, you know, with the previous year questions, of prelims exam, you will find around 20 questions, okay, 15 to 20 questions from science and technology field only. It means that in prelims exam itself, there is a, you know, weightage of around 15% on an average, okay, 15% weightage is given only to science and technology in prelims. If we talk about mains exam, so what is the total marks that you get in, uh, in any of the GS papers? What is the total marks, maximum marks? 250 marks, right? In, uh, like if I talk about science and technology area, nowadays UPSC asks about three to four questions every year. Three to four questions, some questions have a weightage of 15 marks, some questions have a uh, weightage of 10 marks, some year it is 12.5 marks. So on an average what happens, like UPSC is asking question of 40 to 50 marks out of 250. It means it is given a weightage of around 20%. Around 20% weightage is given to science and technology area only. 15 to 20% in prelims, 15 to 20% weightage in mains exam. 
So is it an important area for the prelims exam? Definitely it is an important area. If we talk about like is it an important area for the mains exam? Yes, this is an important area for the mains exam as well. Because like you know 15-20% of marks carries huge weightage in terms of you know overall marks that you score in, in any exam and like you know overall ranking that you get in uh, like UPSC exam okay so that weightage wise right UPSC gives huge weightage to science and technology now let us talk about like many of you people may have started reading uh, like Indian polity right in Indian polity itself like there is a section Right. If you read, I mean, like you know, the Constitution of India. If you read the articles of the Constitution of India, there is a particular portion that talks about you know the fundamental duty of a person to develop scientific temper. So the fundamental duty to develop scientific temper is a part of fundamental duty, and fundamental duties are mentioned in which part of the Constitution of India? Part 4A of the Constitution of India. They have mentioned about. The fundamental duty, I mean like there are 11 fundamental duties that are listed from A to K. One of them is developing scientific temper. Why is it important for, uh, for us to develop scientific temper? Because if we see historically, if we see the, I mean like you know how the Indian society has been developing over the years, right? It's been like the Indian civilization is considered to be one of the oldest civilization in the world. Right? We have, you know, Sanskrit literature, we have Tamil literature, we have, you know, Malayalam literature, Kannada literature, we have, you know, a lot of literatures, right? And so, this civilization being one of the oldest civilization in the world, still was not able to, you know, go at the pace of development that other countries have gone. You understanding? There are other countries in the world, in the Western nations, right? If you go to the Western part of the world, you see there are many countries, right? They have progressed much faster, at a much faster uh, you know, rate, and they have grown to become one of the strongest nations in the world. If we talk about our neighboring country, China, right? China and India got independence almost at the same time. But the thing is like now you see the you know, status of China and you see the status of India. China has grown to become one of the you know, strongest economies in the world that even United States of America thinks twice while doing anything against China. Right? And China has you know, like much bigger economy than India. Right? It is not in terms of only economy, it's, it's also in terms of how civilization is progressing over the years. So, like, if you see, like, you know, there are various, you know, sub pockets, parts, smaller areas in India. These smaller areas, these smaller parts in India still, you know, goes through some of the superstitions. They have beliefs and many of these beliefs are, you know, uh, like, influenced by superstitions. My, means like those beliefs that are not backed by any scientific logic, all right? But still people are following. And because of that particular factor, Right, the Indian uh, civilization or Indian society has not been progressing. You understanding that this is acting as a factor that is holding back India in its growth. Right, so that's why even in the constitution of India, the framers of the constitution of India or the people who have amended the constitution of India, they have included this particular part that talks about developing scientific temper. Why developing scientific temper is important so that like we can reason everything that is happening. We can question, right? There are political leaders in our country, okay? They want to uh, take the masses along with them. And despite them being aware of many of the things, I mean like many superstitions, many scientific things, like they themselves are aware, uh, you know, about many of the things since they want to garner the vote of the masses they want to garner the vote of the masses and at the same time i mean like you know they want to win majority for their party they are you know uh, like what we say they are giving weight to superstitious beliefs right they are i mean like you know uh, like not bringing the society to uh, to the you know level of development that can happen you understanding so that's why it is important for everyone to develop scientific temper so that like once you people become 
a civil servant once you people have the leadership role so that like you can reason out behind everything that is happening right so that like you know the pros and cons of every action that you are taking so that you are under uh, aware like if you do this particular action it may lead to that particular consequence right so that's why it is important for us to develop scientific temper so developing scientific temper is important for the common masses for everyone in the society this is one part but like for you people who are going to lead the nation right by being officers it is more important for like you know from your viewpoint that you develop scientific temper first so that like people are inspired by the actions that you take by the words that you speak by the qualities that you you know uh, like uphold within yourself right so that is important means like you should be the front runner you should be the person who will be who would be leading the masses right you are the one who are going to uh, you know like uh, show the light to the people who are under dilemma there are many people who are under dilemma whether to do this whether to do that you people are more aware you are going to get a lot of knowledge so the thing is like with your awareness with your understanding with your temperament you are going to lead the masses towards a rational you know behavior so that's why it is important for all of us to develop scientific temper okay so that's why up upsc has included science and technology in prelims syllabus and also in the main syllabus right so we have understood like what is the importance of having science and technology in the upsc syllabus many of us come from diverse backgrounds some of you are engineers some of you may be doctors some of you have studied humanities many of you have studied commerce but still it is expected that you people should know about science and technology developments so that like whenever you come across people talking about radar people talking about missiles people talking about that russia has i mean like warned the world that like it is going to attack ukraine with a nuclear capable i mean like you know missile so that like you are able to relate you are able to relate like what does nuclear technology mean right so that's why it is important for us to read science and technology okay so the thing is like reading science and technology for upsc examination is little different then reading science and technology or general science at a school level you understanding at a school level we have you know studied the books we have studied ncert books we have learned about some of the topics like you know we have uh, studied about physics we have studied about chemistry we have studied about biology as well means like we have studied about basic sciences in a school we study basic sciences but like when people do higher studies when they do engineering when they do uh, for example mbbs or like they become doctors they study applied science at a school level we study basic science then like people who do bsc they also study basic science but people who do engineering they study applied science so that like they can uh, they can you know use the basic science principles in developing some of the tools some of the technologies that can have applicability towards the masses so that like we can resolve one or other problem in the society right so if i talk about like what is the utility of developing a plane like you know plane has not been developed overnight it has taken you know thousands of years you know for the entire human being entire civilization right there were few people who have taken the lead they have experimented with few ideas many people might have died also during this process but like it has led to development of a thing that is known as aeroplane right now aeroplane is being manufactured at commercial level it is being utilized by the masses for traveling one place to another place okay so that's how the society has grown right it is not in only in case, case of aeroplane but similar developments has happened in all fields right in all fields when we talk about you know medicine right in the field of medicine for treatment of cancer for treatment of hiv aids for treatment of you know like chronic diseases right there are uh, i mean like you know medicines available there are doctors there are researchers who are still working in, in that direction why they are working so that like they can come up with the most precise uh, like medications for most precise tools for diagnosing the you know uh, diagnosing different diseases and all 
So that's why I mean like if we talk about science and technology also there are multiple areas. One of the example is defense technology. If we talk about Rafael, right? You might have heard about Rafael because of news, uh, you know, uh, things in newspaper, in television, you know, political parties were, you know, blaming one another related to Rafael deal. But what is Rafael? It's a fighter aircraft that is used by, uh, that can be, uh, that will be used by Indian Air Force, right? You might have heard about S-400 missile defense system, right? So this is like a missile defense system that, that will be used by the defense forces to safeguard our borders, right? You might have heard about, you know, COVID-19 vaccine. Why COVID-19 vaccine? So that we can protect the civilization from a chronic disease like, you know, sars covid So the thing is, scientific development is happening in multiple areas around the world. Why? Because the civilization, the human civilization is responding to different needs of the society at different points of time. Developing COVID-19 vaccine was the need of the society at that particular point of time when the, you know, society, when, when the civilization was stuck. I mean, like when it was like, you know, under the grave, what we say, attack of, you know, a virus that nobody knew about, like what can be consequences, how we can tackle, right? So like everybody, I mean, like around the world started talking about it. There are organizations they have, uh, that have taken the lead of developing vaccine. There are world leaders who became the first persons to get vaccinated, COVID-19 vaccinated. Why? Because they wanted to bring trust among the masses. So that like if they themselves can get vaccinated, other people can follow them. They also get vaccinated. Okay. Because if the leaders are themselves not getting vaccinated, then others will not be having trust in the system. You're understanding? So that's why it is important for us to like, you know, know about science and technology to know about the developments in multiple areas, right? So I talked about like, what is the basic difference between basic science and applied science? In UPSC, UPSC asks question from both the areas, from basic sciences also, from applied sciences also. Basic sciences means like we should have understanding about what is cell, what are cell walls, what are the different components in a cell. For example, like you might have heard about human cell or like animal cell, plant cell, you might have heard about kingdoms, right? We have, I mean, like animals, plants, then uh, like, you know, like we have learned about various things in our schooling. So they form part of the basic sciences. So it is important for us to learn about the basic sciences from NCRT books. Why? Because NCRTs are the fundamental resources that everybody should follow. Okay. And NCRT books are developed, built by professors of different universities. They are of high repute. They are the ones who are developing, you know, curriculum for NCRTs. They are the ones who are deciding the like content of the NCRT books. So the students who are reading NCRT at a school level, they are reading, you know, those books, those things that are highly researched. Okay. Now, why you are reading it again? So that like you can go back to the basic sciences again to understand what you have earlier learned and what you had missed. So that like you can connect the dots between the basic science and the applied science. Okay. It is important that we should be able to connect the dots between basic science and applied science. We understand about, you know, like viruses, like what are virus, like DNA virus, RNA virus in our NCRT books in 11th standard, 12th standard. Then now we are uh, reading about vaccination. We are reading about, you know, different, uh, like what we say, scientific journals. We are learning about, you know, what uh, WHO is saying. Why? Because like when we are learning about these things, we know about contemporary developments in this society. What is happening with this society, right? And if we don't have the basic understanding, we'll, we will not be able to connect the recent developments with the, you know, basic fundamental ideas, basic fundamental concepts that we have studied in our schooling, okay? So these are the, like, you know, these are the main points. So we need to learn the basic resources to understand the basic concepts first. Once we have learned about that, then we need to understand about applied science, right? Applied science and we need to connect it with recent developments that is happening in this society. All right. So that's how we learn about science and technology.
okay so this is the basic difference between what we have learned in 10th and 12th standard or in our schooling and what we are going to learn for civil services preparation so civil services requires you people to be more aware of the fundamentals it requires you to be the one who can connect the dots right and it requires you to have that scientific temper so that you can reason out you know the basic things between uh, various you know multiple dimensions of the things so this is the thing now uh, so it is important for you to learn these ncrt books so ncrt classes are already being taken by ashwini pande sir ashwini kumar sir yes the recording yes all the lectures that are happening all these lectures are recorded and like you people will soon be onboarded right in a platform where you will get all the recorded lectures in one place right from there NCRT all lectures ncrt these classes further classes that are going to happen all the students who are part of gs foundation batch right they are entitled to get the classes in both the modes offline and online right except the first 10 rankers of ga 400 dreams scholarship test that we have conducted okay so by now we have understood about what is the importance of reading science and technology what is basic sciences what is applied sciences now we are going to learn about like what upsc is expecting from us right so what upsc expects is mentioned in the syllabus of upsc okay what upsc expects is mentioned in the syllabus of upsc and we can see what upsc expects through the questions of previous year of upsc prelims exam and the mains exam so the thing is if we revisit the syllabus of upsc if we go through the previous year questions we will be able to you know understand what upsc demands from a student right and accordingly we should you know prepare our science and technology area all right so let us see like you know what is there in the syllabus of upsc okay so now here if we talk about the prelims examination upsc has mentioned in gs paper 1 it has mentioned general science general science includes basic science and applied science okay so when we talk about general science it includes basic science and applied science and contemporary developments okay so these three things are implied in the keyword basic science a uh, general science okay so we should learn about the basic sciences from the ncrt books we should learn about applied sciences the recent technological developments that are happening and also club the basic things applied things with the contemporary happening the contemporary developments now what is the next generation of the things that are happening artificial intelligence machine learning right artificial intelligence machine learning we are we are uh, understanding about blockchain we are understanding about you know cryptocurrencies bitcoin we are learning about virtual reality right we are learning about uh, like you know facebook has also come up with something meta platform we are learning about metaverse right these are the recent things that are happening if you like you know have the inquisitive mind if you ask yourself these questions you will be looking forward uh, you know you will be searching in internet like what do we mean by metaverse what do we mean by blockchain what do we mean by artificial intelligence right how blockchain works lot of things right so that will shape your understanding related to things and you will be able to answer questions if upsc frames a question of that nature now we need to understand that upsc is not asking you know predefined questions like you know it is not copying question from one source and giving it to students to answer what upsc does upsc has a team of specialist okay that keeps on changing the composition keeps on changing year on year they have you know different personals who are suggesting like they are uh, there are people who are recommending upsc to do something in in this manner that manner and all there are specialists right in certain domains they are told by uh, by the you know heads of of upsc at different level that like frame questions of this nature that nature that nature 
they are framing questions they are giving to UPSC and then those people who have given question they also don't know like how many questions will be taken whether my question will be taken or not how many people have you know submitted the question so the thing is even the framers of questions don't know what is going to come in the paper all right it is all of a surprise that like students are the ones students are the one who read all the questions for the first time in detail right so the thing is like we should not expect so we should not expect UPSC to be asking question in oh just a minute okay so we should not be expecting UPSC to be asking question in this way or that way there is no standard way for UPSC for asking questions okay so UPSC keeps on changing its pattern keeps on changing the question nature keeps on changing the number of questions that they ask right from different areas it depends on that particular year how the question will be framed okay so we should be dynamic we should be learning we should not be expecting question from UPSC we should not be expecting that like if I read only the basic sciences UPSC will ask questions from here if I read from applied sciences UPSC will ask from here if I read this magazine if I read that magazine UPSC will ask questions from here no nothing like that okay UPSC will ask questions in its own way what we can do is we can learn right these topics from the uh, like the we can get the clues from previous questions we can get the clues from the syllabus we can get the clues from the current affairs the newspapers okay so wherever I mean like we come across we can we should get the clues and any topic that strikes your mind you should learn about it completely completely does not mean you start doing research it means you should have the clarity what is this why is it is in is in news now right uh, like what can be its future potential lot of things like basic questions what why how when like this okay four or five similar uh, things are there if you know these basic things related to anything right that is in news you will be able to answer most of the questions in UPSC this is the thing okay so we should not expect UPSC to be asking questions from the resources that we are reading if we are following a particular magazine we cannot expect UPSC that UPSC did not ask question from this magazine this institute is not right that institute is right like that nothing like that okay your goal is to learn the topics in detail about what is this why is this how it is this and what are its implications like that okay so this is the thing are you understanding my point so this is how our preparation orientation should be so when we talk about general science we should learn about basic science applied science and contemporary developments related to this contemporary development means current affairs okay next thing is like how do we understand what is to be studied in basic science what is to be studied in applied science what is to be studied in current affairs to understand that part we should go to, uh, and see the syllabus of the mains exam related to that particular section itself that is science and technology so if we see the mains examination syllabus in mains examination the science and technology part is there in GS paper 3 okay it is there in GS paper 3 so the first point is science and technology developments and their application and effects in everyday life so the first sentence itself talks about the importance of reading current affairs how science and technology is developing how I mean like it is you know what are its applications and effects in everyday life okay so anything that we are reading we know, should know about its basics we should know about its applications okay we should know about its basics and applications right so this is the thing second achievements of Indians in science and technology why achievements of Indians in science and technologies because like there have been various I mean like you know people like if I talk about Homi Jahangir Baba Homi Jahangir Baba so I hope some of you may have heard about this name some of you may not have heard about this name so can anyone tell me like what contribution did Homi Jahangir Baba did to science and technology field Sir, nuclear technology. Yes. right so like he was the key person for developing nuclear technology in India right so we have Baba atomic research center also right 
if we talk about dr bikram sarabhai what is his contribution in the field of science and technology yes space science rocket technology right so we have indian space research organization the key person behind this right there are although many people are there but dr bikram sarabhai played a key role very important role and if we talk about indian space research organization this is one of the top most organization in the world top most space research organization it comes you know after few top organizations like nasa what is the full form of nasa national aeronautics and space administration this is the space agency of the united states of america if we talk about roscosmos this is the space agency of russia nasa uh, like isro is the space agency of india indian space research organization similarly jaxa right it is the uh, like um, this space agency of japan then if we talk about china china also has a space agency okay so we should learn about you know these things space agencies and all so i have given you example of two persons like dr homi jahangir baba bikram sarabhai similarly like if you open the previous year mains questions of upsc you will come across that in, in upsc they have asked about contribution of so and so person in 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 the field of science and technology so similarly like you know you should learn about like what are the contributions why why we should learn about this particular thing because like if we see the globe if we see the world that we are living today right in the world that we are living uh, living today the societies are divided by the borders that people have created for themselves the borders were not there like if we go to the you know past civilization if we go to the i mean initial stages right the borders are created by the people by the societies why they have created borders for themselves to safeguard their interest the first and primary reason was to safeguard their interest the second reason was to showcase their dominance in a particular field over others right so the thing is every society every civilization every country around the world it has an inherent desire to protect its interest to showcase itself to be a leader in certain areas right there are different countries that are leaders in 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 different areas so the thing is like if india wants to showcase what are its key strengths what are the areas that like uh, in which it can become leader so the thing is for that particular purpose we should know what is the contribution of indians in the field of science and technology in the field of art in the field of space science in the field of this thing like that okay so that's why it is important for us to know the contributions of indians in the field of science and technology or in any field right so it is important that we should learn about achievement of indians in science and technology right why because like you know tomorrow you people will become some of you become indian foreign services officers some will become ias officers if you happen to go on a uh, you know meeting abroad right for example united nation general assembly if you once like you know given a, an opportunity to speak at the unga on behalf of the government of india on behalf of indians right so what you are going to speak about you are going to speak about the aspirations that the people of indians right people of india or the indian civilization or the indian society has you know for itself they you will talk about the aspirations in different fields that we we want to you know prosper in the field where we want to i mean become world leaders and at the same time you will talk about what indians have been doing in this field or that field for so many years for decades right so that's why it is important that we should learn about contributions of indians in various fields so that you can showcase the aspirations of people you can showcase the work done by people of indians because like if you only show the aspiration if you don't talk about what you have done so your speech your word will be taken as hollow 
Yeah, it will not be given due importance, right? So that's why it is important for us to know the contribution of Indians in different fields. Like if I talk about missile system, have, uh, like, do we know about Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam? Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. What are his contributions? Right. He is known as the missile man of India. He is the one who has first, you know, built the missile technologies for India. Right. And he has been a pioneer in, in the field that he has gone through. He has, like, being a, a scientist, he has, I mean, like, not worked only for missile technology. He has worked in multiple areas in the field of science and technology itself. And in all these, uh, I mean, like, in all these fields, he has been pioneer and he has developed it to such a level that, like, you know, India has, you know, taken forward 20 years, 30 years ahead of its time. And apart from this, he was the only scientist who became, you know, the president of India also, only like scientists from ISRO. So that's the thing. So when we go to the world outside, we should talk about like what Indians have done, how society has been prospering, right? So that's why it is important for us to learn about this, uh, you know, uh, like Indians. Next thing, we will talk about indigenization of technology and developing new technology, okay? Indigenization of technology. Indigenization means there are various technologies that are developed outside India. They are already developed outside India and Indians or the, uh, like India as a society, they did not have these technologies. So the thing is like how we indigenize those technologies. Initially, we come in contact with those things like you know we do contract we sign contract for technology transfer we purchase some of the things from outside and in the clause itself for example we are purchasing 500 rafale aircraft in the contract that we are signing in the contract we are also mentioning that along with the delivery of the consignments you are also going to deliver the know-how you are going to deliver how this technology is being built in a phased manner so that down the line after 10 years after 20 years we can develop you know such technologies indigenously that's indigenization of technology are we understanding this thing so there are different countries for example if i talk about uh, like covid 19 vaccination right so uh, russia was building it usa was building it india was building it right so in india we had manufacturing hubs right and during COVID-19, I mean, that particular phase, lockdown phase, we have developed vaccine and we have, you know, produced in masses. And we have not only vaccinated our own people, we have also vaccinated, we have helped other countries to vaccinate their people, right? During the time when USA was withdrawing from uh, Afghanistan, right? USA was withdrawing its forces from Afghanistan. So Afghanistan was slowly and gradually being taken over by Taliban. That time, you know, like COVID-19 was going on, like people had to be vaccinated. Indian government want, wanted to help Afghanistan. How could India help? India, see, like India could not immediately recognize a Taliban to be a leader, to be a, a what we say, de jure leader they have become a de facto leader. De facto means, in fact, right? In fact, they have the dominance. In, have, in fact, they are the ones who are controlling the resources in Afghanistan. But the thing is, the way, the manner in which they have taken over the power in Afghanistan was not a natural process. It was a forceful, brutal process. They have killed thousands of people. They have devastated homes, right? They have threatened the livelihoods of the common people of Afghanistan. So that time, the government of India wanted to help, you know, even the people of Afghanistan who were going, you know, the sea change in the authority who are going to rule them. So we have sent planes also, right? We have sent planes uh, uh, in which like we had the COVID-19 vaccination thing. So it was a gift from India to the people of Afghanistan, it is written gift from people of India to the people of Afghanistan. So we did not recognize the ruler, but we recognized 
the need of the common people there. We have helped many other countries. We have, you know, sent vaccinations. So that's how, you know, uh, like India, a country, I mean, like, you know, it showcases its power. It showcases talent of its people, the willingness of its people, not only to, you know, help its own people in prospering, but also to help other countries around the world to, uh, so that they can prosper, so that they can stay peacefully, right? So this is the thing. So indigenization of technology is important and developing new technology is also equally important, right? Those countries who, I mean like, you know, invest huge amount of money, huge amount of resource in doing research and development, they are the first who come up with new ideas, who get those ideas patented and who, you know, hold over the right to produce that particular technology themselves. And if they transfer it to someone else, then they will be charging royalty on this, right? If I talk about Russia, if I talk about USA, if I talk about Japan, if I talk about South Korea, these are the countries, right, that invest huge amount of money, huge, huge resources in developing new technology, okay? Why? Because like they want to become the first country in the world to develop such a technology, okay? So India, although like, you know, is moving in that direction, but like India also has various limitations. So we may not be the new players in, in developing certain technologies as the first country, but like we are either second or third country to follow that particular thing. So that like we can make it cost effective. A lot of things are there. Now, next thing is awareness in the field of IT. What is IT? information technology do we have a ministry in india yes. related to this what is the name of the ministry ministry of electronics and it right this is known as m e i t y ministry of electronics and information technology okay meti then so meti uh, so awareness in the field of it okay space computers Robotics, nanotechnology, biotechnology, and issues relating to intellectual property rights, right? So can anyone tell me about name of some intellectual property rights? What are different types of intellectual property rights? Copyright, trademark. Yes. Copyright, trademark, then we have uh, patent, geographical indication tag, industrial design, right? We have different types of intellectual property rights. We have IPR laws in India also. We have World Intellectual Property Organization as well. We have signed TRIPS agreement, trade related aspects of intellectual property rights. So like, you know, if I talk about any particular area, so there are multiple things that are happening in those areas. So we should know about the basics. We should know about the recent developments. We should know about its applications. And so we should be able to connect the dots. Okay, we should be able to connect the dots so that like, you know, so that if any uh, discussion is happening, we should uh, be in a position to understand what they are talking about. We should be in a position to talk about our understanding, about our opinion in that particular field. Okay, so being an aspirant means you are aspiring to become leader, right? You are aspiring to become leader so that you can talk to people that this is right, this is not right, this is what we should follow, this is what we should do, right? So this is the thing. So have we understood about syllabus of means exam? Yes. So if we want to prepare for the prelims exam where they have just mentioned the keyword general science, we should look at the syllabus of the means exam, we should take clues from here and we should prepare this thing along with that thing, okay? So this is how our preparation strategy should be. We should also look at the, you know, previous year question papers of prelims exam, of mains exam to understand how UPSC is asking questions in those areas, right? So we have learned about this particular thing. If I talk about NCRT books for the basic sciences, so which books should we read? Some of the books I have mentioned, some of the books I did not mention. Eighth standard NCRT, 
those people who are not from science background means like those students who did not study science after 10th standard right means after 10th people take you know different streams uh, medical non medical humanities like that those people who have taken humanities who do not have touch with the basic sciences book they can open the ncert book of 8th standard 9th standard and 10th standard they can quickly skim through they can learn about what are the topics mentioned wherever they think that they don't know about this topic should read those topics to understand the basics and apart from this this is 12th standard biology book ncert book right you should read this particular book also after reading 10th standard book okay in 10th standard book like they have uh, biology chemistry physics in one single book but like you know as we go higher then you know things become more specialized so things become segregated see physics class 12th i mean like it's not needed i mean like you will be reading hygiene's principle you will be reading a lot of things i mean like you know wave front and all so uh, like that is uh, going back to you know reading bsc reading uh, btech and all uh, like we cannot i mean like you know devote so much time into this so that's the thing why biology is important because now i'm going to talk about the recent trends i'm going to talk about the trend in which upsc is asking question right so you will understand that nowadays upsc has shifted uh, its pattern the nature of question that is it is asking it is asking from basic science from biology field and it is asking from applied science biotechnology applied biotechnology so that's why this 12th standard book is important okay so those people i mean like who are from uh, for example medical field they may not need to read it but other people should follow this particular book you should read it so the entire book certain chapters certain chapter if you open right so introductory chapter you can uh, skip and all so once you open like you will come across this thing ncert classes are already going on so you people will be learning about you know those ncert things now so like if you see the previous year questions of mains exam or prelims exam you will be able to identify areas key areas like this okay you can make a list of you know more areas or you can make a list of lesser areas but this is just one such notion that like whenever you come across any question whenever you come across any question of previous year mains exam or prelims exam you should identify the area from which upsc has asked question okay for example uh, the space technology right space technology i'll show you question and we will link with the syllabus okay we will link with the syllabus space technology defense for example i talked about rafael i talked about s400 so these are part of space techno uh, defense technology if i talk about in space you might have heard about this particular uh, keyword in space what is the full form of in space no means what is this in space it's a private company that uh, is you might have have heard about entrix it's a commercial wing of isro hmm. in space uh, they are promoting indigenization of technology hmm. in uh, space see like if i talk about isro as a body earlier isro as a body was into development i mean like they were doing research and technology uh, research and development they were developing you know satellites they were developing you know launch vehicles they were uh, developing launch vehicles also what kind of launch vehicles gslv geo geo stationary you know launch vehicle geo synchronous sun synchronous like that okay so they were uh, launching this particular thing so for the single body to do research and development to do marketing to do i mean collaboration with foreign partners becomes difficult very difficult so that's why government of india has created you know separate bodies that will be connected with isro in some or other capacity and they will be given different roles so that isro can focus more on research and development related activities so entrix is one such body which is a commercial wing of isro this particular body will come in commercial contract with other countries for example with usa with japan with china with this country that country france right so that like we can launch their vehicles uh, like their satellites using our you know launch vehicles and all 
So like this is for collaboration with foreign partners. If I talk about in space, right, in space means like this is for giving boost to the private players that are located in India. If I talk about USA, United States of America, they have one of the leading space agencies in the world, which is NASA, National Aeronautics and Space Administration. But apart from this, they have a private player also, SpaceX, right, Elon Musk, right. So that SpaceX, it has garnered more, I mean, what we say, uh, more uh, brand value or brand name as compared to NASA as well. Means like this is working in collaboration with NASA. SpaceX is helping NASA in many such pro projects. So the thing is, India has seen like what is the potential of private sector in this particular field, right? So we have, I mean, like taken that idea from USA and other countries elsewhere. And we want to implement in India also so that like in future, we can also have, you know, those startups in India, those private players in India who can not only, I mean, like help the country India, you know, gain name in certain areas, but will also help ISRO in, in one or other area. Okay. So that's why this, I mean, like, you know, this is important. The space sector, defense sector, robotics, robotics. You, you might be learning about robotics in various fields. I mean, like we talk about artificial intelligence. We talk about, I mean, like, you know, Internet of Things. Internet of Things is connecting Internet with robotics. Simple, right? Internet of Things. Nuclear technology. I mean, like, you know, we study about nuclear doctrine. We have nuclear principle in India. Uh, China also has nuclear principle. I mean, like, you know, Russia also has, they have, uh, like, India is a nuclear capable country. Pakistan is a nuclear capable country. China is a nuclear capable country. Okay. So that's why we should learn about nuclear technology. Nuclear energy, I mean, if I talk about nuclear energy, this is a dual use technology. Dual use technology means like nuclear energy can be used for peaceful purposes, like for generation of power. It can be used for defense purposes like, you know, launching a missile, nuclear powered missile. Okay. So this is a dual use technology. If you learn about, you know, different regimes, if you learn about like, you know, we do have different regimes. For example, missile technology control regime. Okay. We have MTCR. If you learn about missile technology control regime, you will learn about what is its role. You will learn about what kind of, you know, uh, like technologies does it uh, control. You will learn about Wassenaar Agreement. You will learn about Australia Group. Lot of things are there. So, so the thing is, we should learn about nuclear energy, right? Nuclear energy. I mean, like it is a dual use technology. So, we will learn about it in, in later classes, right? Yes. Apart from this, IT, telecom, electronics. This is also a part of syllabus. Like we have seen the syllabus. I am just, you know, making you aware of the syllabus so that in later phase when you start reading you will be able to connect with the syllabus okay it telecom electronics recently you might have heard about like government of india has come up, uh, come up with new policy documents new policy documents talk about i mean like you know uh, regulating the uh, i mean uh, platforms plat digital platforms right so like we want to regulate digital platforms why because like many digital platforms are there for example uh, amazon right like india is a big market for them but like their company is registered elsewhere they are gaining profit from india but the thing is they are not sharing their profit with the government of india right so ultimately like if we talk about in broader sense they are, you know, gaining profit, they are taking it back to other countries. So like it is making India poorer in terms of economics, in, in terms of financials, right? So the thing is, we want to have control over that aspect. Apart from this, there are multiple platforms, for example, social, uh, social media platforms. These social media platforms has some norms. I mean, like these platforms follow the norms of the origin country, the country where they are registered they follow the norms of that particular country and, and like, you know, in these platforms, millions and millions of Indians have their account. So these Indians have their account, but government of India does not have any say, right? 
I mean, these platforms can be used for good purposes, for example, you know, spreading uh, good news, I mean, like, you know, you know, for information purposes. And at the same time, these platforms can be misused for political propaganda, for, I mean, like, you know, misinformation, for sharing fake information, etc. So the thing is, like, it is important for us to have, you know, effective say in, in how these bodies are regulated. It's not necessarily, you know, for, I'm, I mean, like, you know, putting a curb on free speech, but like, it's, it's like being a part of that particular thing. I mean, like that particular policy making framework. So that's why government of India comes up with uh, different, you know, things at different point of time. If I talk about telecom sector, you might have heard about Reliance, Vodafone, Idea, Geo, etc. Right? Earlier, we used to have Vodafone, Idea, all these, I mean, like, you know, SIM cards with people. But now, majority of people have only two types of SIM cards, either Geo or Airtel. Okay? Why either Geo or Airtel? Because earlier, when Reliance was there, I mean, like, you know, the, they were at the key uh, player. But Geo came up with free plan. Like, everybody will be given free SIM card. They will be given one year free talk time, unlimited talk time and all. So people have shifted, okay? So there was a mobility, I mean like, you know, yeah, like a portability. I mean like you can port from one to other. So the thing is effectively what they have done, they have taken all users from all other, I mean like, you know, telecom providers in their platform. Uh, there were, you know, many cases in the Supreme Court of India, High Court of India related to, I mean, unfair trade practices. We do have, you know, a law in India that is known as Monopolistic Trade Restrictions Act, something like that, okay? If you read about that particular thing, it prohibits unfair trade practices. It promotes healthy competition in the market so that quality of the products improves and at the same time, so that, I mean, like, you know, uh, yeah, cost of the product is reduced. So a lot of these things are there. So uh, here you might have talked about, uh, you might have learned about that like, you know, government of India has applied retrospective taxation on certain companies like Vodafone or like, you know, Airtel. Okay, retrospective taxation. So there are different types of taxes. I mean like, you know, so retrospective, prospective. Okay, ret um, when we talk about taxation, it's, it's a part of civil matter. Okay, so we do have, you know, different types of uh, like uh, when we read about judiciary, when we read about polity, we learn about, you know, criminal, uh, you know, justice system. We talk about civil justice system and all. So this particular thing, taxation matters form part of civil uh, matters. So there we can have retrospective laws also. But for criminal matters, we can only have prospective laws. Means like we can make law today. It will not be applicable cable from a previous date. It will be applicable from the date we decide in future. Means like maybe from today or in future like that, okay? So you will come across different, you know, uh, articles from polity. So you will learn about that thing. Now, when we talk about nano science and, science, uh, and nanotechnology, right? Nano science and nanotechnology is also an emerging field, right? So nano science, uh, like if we, if we go to the basic sciences, we will learn about graphite, we will learn about carbon, we will learn about allotropes of carbon, right? So carbons, nanotubes, carbon nanotubes are used for creating, you know, nanotechnology, okay, for creating products that are of nano size. Nano size means size of the range of 10 raised to power minus 9 meter, right? Micrometer, nanometer, then uh, like that, okay? So this is the thing. Biotechnology, all of us are well aware of biotechnology related things, okay? Bi biotechnology, you know, because of COVID-19, we have, you know, learned little more about this particular field. Then renewable energy. <clears throat> renewable energy is something that the world is aspiring to have. Why? Because if we talk about conventional sources of energy like fossil fuel, the conventional sources of energy are getting depleted at a very fast rate. And down the line after 40, 50 years, we will not be left with, you know, the conventional sources of energy or fossil fuels, right? After then, the only future that is available with us is renewable sources of energy or alternate sources of energy, okay? So we, we do have a ministry in India also that is known as Ministry of New and Renewable Energy, okay? That is known as 
एम एन आर ई मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ न्यू एंड रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी वाई बिकॉज दिस पर्टिकुलर मिनिस्ट्री इज फोकसिंग टूवर्ड्स द फ्यूचर इट इज फोकसिंग टूवर्ड्स द फ्यूचर बिकॉज इन फ्यूचर वी विल हैव ऑल्टरनेट सोर्सेज ऑफ एनर्जी फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ आई टॉक अबाउट द वेहीकल्स लाइक यू नो पब्लिक ट्रांसपोर्ट वेहीकल एज ऑफ नाउ वट टाइप ऑफ वेहीकल्स डू वी यूज फॉर पब्लिक ट्रांसपोर्ट डीजल वेहीकल एंड पेट्रोल एंड सी एन जी राइट डीजल पेट्रोल एंड सी एन जी सो ऑल ऑफ दीज आई मीन लाइक यू नो टू ग्रेटर एक्सटेंट डीजल एंड पेट्रोल आर पार्ट ऑफ कन्वेंशनल सोर्सेज ऑफ एनर्जी दे आर डिराइव फ्रॉम द फॉसिल फ्यूल्स सो दे विल बी यू नो एग्जॉस्टेड इन द नियर फ्यूचर नाउ वॉट इज द एमर्जिंग फील्ड इन दिस पर्टिकुलर एरिया ई वी या इलेक्ट्रिक वेहीकल्स एंड ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन एटसेट्रा लाइक वी डू हैव डिफरेंट वेरियंट्स ऑफ हाइड्रोजन ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन ब्लू हाइड्रोजन ब्राउन हाइड्रोजन लाइक दैट ओके सो लाइक दिस इज आई मीन लाइक हाउ डू वी कैटेगराइज वी कैटेगराइज दिस ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ आई मीन लाइक दी वे वी आर प्रोड्यूसिंग द वे इट इज बींग यूटिलाइज एंड द काइंड ऑफ यू नो बाई प्रोडक्ट दैट इट रिलीज इज लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स आर देयर सो वी नीड टू स्टडी इन डिटेल अबाउट दिस थिंग सो वन ऑफ द ऑल्टरनेटिव फोर पेट्रोल और डीजल कार इज इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल द इंटायर वर्ल्ड इज यू नो मूविंग टूवर्ड्स इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल इवन गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया और द फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर मिस निर्मला सीतारमन वाइल प्रोड्यूसिंग द बजट शी हैज आई मीन लाइक गिवन ए स्पेशल ट्रीटमेंट फॉर इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल सेगमेंट दे हैव गिवन टैक्सेशन रिबेट दे हैव यू नो लाइक दे हैव इंट्रोड्यूस सच पॉलिसीज दैट इज गोइंग टू हेल्प दिस पर्टिकुलर इंडस्ट्री टू फ्लरिश इन फ्यूचर डाउन द लाइन आफ्टर फाइव इयर्स फ्रॉम नाउ we can see certain areas where i mean like you know the ev segment or electric vehicle segment is going to i mean take over the conventional things okay like in this area like we have tata motors we have electra we have different i mean like companies uh, now uh, i mean although like if i talk about electric vehicle many people have this particular notion that tesla tesla is a uh, you know company based in usa led by elon musk so this is you know producing electric vehicles uh, this is one of the pioneer companies that have invested huge amount of money in developing electric vehicles but in india also different companies for example tata motors hero and like you know electra electra means like one of the companies that is uh, making bus electric vehicle bus uh, like you know ev bus okay so you will soon see like after 2 3 years those buses in delhi also okay means like they have their plants in in elsewhere in india but they are going to have their bus in delhi as well okay so this is the thing so now achievement of indians in science and technology we have already talked about so are we now aware of the syllabus of upsc means like we were able to connect you know some of the points with the syllabus of upsc right so now we are going to look into right we are going to look into uh, <coughs> some previous year questions i mean like this is up to 2020 in 2021 i am leaving it uh, it up to you people to see the paper of 2021 and to see how many questions are asked from science and technology section this year i mean 2021 they have asked more number of question than any year before like that okay so uh, this is a chart i mean like for prelims exam this is related to prelims exam 2013 i mean like 6 to 7 questions 14 also like that 15 10 questions like this 2018 i mean like more than 10 question up to 15 like that you are you are seeing means at least 10 to 15% weightage is there in the prelims exam and this is a very important segment for the prelims exam itself okay i guess like online this thing got disconnected so they'll be connecting it soon okay so this is for the prelims exam yes okay this is for the prelims exam okay if i talk about the mains examination of upsc so what are the nature of questions that they have asked okay if i talk about the first question okay so we will read the question and you people will tell me to which part of the syllabus it is connected okay which uh, segment we can connect it with how is s400 air defense system technically superior to any other system presently available in the world defense right it is associated with defense technology so defense is there in the syllabus in the mains exam yeah space then defense we have read right uh, second 
What are the research and developmental achievement in applied biotechnology? How will these achievements help to fulfill the poorer sections of the society? This is connected with biotechnology. So the key theme, important theme from which they are asking question. Defense technology, biotechnology, third question. Third, the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2014 was jointly awarded to Akasaki Amano Nakamura okay, for invention of blue LEDs in 1990s. The first part of the question is information. Means like they have not asked anything. They are giving you information that like they have asked this question in the year of 2021. But they have given you information that like you know the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2014 was awarded to this thing. It is possible, it is uh, very much possible that many of you may not have a, a thought of preparing for UPSC in the year of 2014. So they have not asked question from there, they have given you information that like in this particular year these people have been awarded Nobel Prize for the invention of blue LEDs in 1990s, right? How has this invention impacted everyday life of human beings, okay? How has this invention impacted the everyday life of human beings, okay? So this is the thing. Now, what they are actually trying to ask, they are trying to ask about the application of blue LEDs in everyday life of human being, okay? Blue LEDs, simple. Right? But like they have framed this question in such a manner that many of you, many people may find it very difficult. Okay? So if I want to connect this particular question with you know, some key thematic area of the mains exam. So which thematic area we can connect? And effects in everyday life. Right. The first, uh, first point itself. Uh, so we will go back just, uh, uh, you know, two slides back and we will see. This is the thing. Developments and their applications and effects in everyday life, science and technology. First point itself. Okay. So <laughs> here Indians were not there. So this is not there. Indigenization, no. Sir, Awareness, it may be. Actually, let me tell you, you may find it hard now because you don't know like in the year of 2021 when people were preparing, that year like this particular blue LEDs has been in news multiple times. So UPSC takes clues from the newspaper articles and they frame questions in such a manner that the question seems to be easy, means like from the basic things, but people should have you know basic understanding. All these questions require you people, I mean like, you know, if you have read something from book, uh, you know, like as it is just, you know, replication of the facts will not help you. You should have the understanding of the topics and you should be in a position to apply those knowledge in writing the answer. That is important, okay? So we have seen 2021, they have asked how many questions? Three questions, okay? Three questions in 2021. Now. Okay. We need to zoom out. Yes, done. Okay. So we have learned about two thousand twenty one. Let's go back to 2020 and let's try to connect with the uh, I mean, like questions that they have asked. First question, what do you understand by nanotechnology? And how is it helping the health sector? Right? Why they have asked in the year of 2020? Because in 2020, COVID-19 has impacted. Right? Means like health sector, nanotechnology. I mean, like people are using nanotechnology in health sector. So this is the thing. So this, uh, the basic idea in this question is nanotechnology. So like if we understand the syllabus, if we see the keywords, if we have understanding of the keywords of the syllabus, right, we will be able to answer such questions. All right, next question. How is science interwoven deeply with our lives? 
what are the striking changes in agriculture triggered off by science based technologies now in the first part of the question they have asked like gender generistic uh, you know uh, they have given generistic statement they have asked how science is connected with our everyday life the watch that we are wearing this is also a scientific development okay it is very much connected with our daily life apart from this now they have asked about like you know like what are the striking changes in agriculture related to this thing can you people give me some uh, like examples number one tractor that we are using it it's also a scientific uh, you know innovation then like you know the, the kind of what we say uh, summer civils that we are using for extracting water ground water for irrigation purposes this is also connected with i mean like scientific development the kind of fertilizers that we are using fertilizers i mean like they are made in you know definite proportion of npk nitrogen phosphorus and uh, you know yes, potassium and apart from this if we talk about soil health card scheme this is also a scientific development okay we are now using uh, satellite based images to predict the soil quality in different areas right uh, so that's also a scientific application apart from this i mean like you know many people are given for example those people who do the soil health card they re receive direct text message from ministries i mean from departments related to soil quality they also re receive recommendation what kind of uh, i mean like you know what kind of uh, seeds they should use what kind of crop they should grow and all right so these are all inventions of science and technology so if you are reading more if you you know read more you will be able to connect more number of point you will be able to give your you know answer and that's the thing third question you see why in 2020 majority of questions i mean like you know the health uh, this nanotechnology related to health center covid 19 i mean like you know because that year like the world has seen covid 19 uh, you know devastating that's the thing devastating the world and apart from this why they have asked about agriculture sector because like if i talk about 2020 the entire economy was devastated but the thing is the agriculture sector was the only sector that was able to sustain at the pre pandemic level during the pandemic time itself and they have given livelihood to not only the people who were earlier dependent on agriculture but also those to uh, to those people who have lost their livelihood from other areas right so this is the thing okay so like every year the kind of question that upsc is framing is it, it is shaped by the current affairs that are there in that year but current affair in itself does not become question current affair become an inspiration for upsc to ask question from certain areas right so this is important if i see 2019 okay i'm just taking you through uh, the mains questions so that like you can relate with the syllabus and you can effectively prepare for it what is india's plan to have its own space station and how will it benefit our space program okay now what do we mean by space station you might have heard about international space station what is international space station it is an artificial man made satellite which is providing habitable environment to astronauts we are sending astronauts from earth they are going to that particular international space station they are residing over there they are doing some scientific uh, you know exploration understanding i mean like they are doing uh, the scientific experiments over there and these people are coming back to earth also so that's a kind of home artificial home that is not located on the surface of the earth that is not located in the outer space that is located just above the environment just above the you know atmosphere of earth okay so this is located somewhere where like you know this particular thing can be stable it is not directly falling on the surface of the earth it is not going away means like it is there in the what we say in the gravitational area of earth where the gravitational force is being nullified by the rotational force of the earth means like this is international space station at present the international station is space station that is there it is a collaborative project of various countries 
Langrange's point are different. I, I will talk about the, uh, that thing, okay? So now, so the thing is, now the International Space Station that is there, this International Space Station is a collaborative project of USA, of Russia, of France, of Japan. Means like these different countries are providing different components, different, I mean like, you know, inputs to that International Space Station. That International Space Station is not owned by a single country, okay? And this particular thing was also in news recently during uh, Russia-Ukraine war. Yeah, means like Russia is actually, uh, Russia has launched a special military operation on Ukraine. But many other countries are against Russia. Why they are against Russia? Because like, you know, this is against the international world order. This is against the principles laid down by the United Nations General Assembly or the, uh, the Charter of the United Nations. All right, this is against the principles. Since Russia is itself a P5 member of the UNSC, so that's why, I mean, like, Russia can veto any decision of the United Nations Security Council. The world is still abiding the international law. It is still abiding the international norms that is there. But the thing is, like, this particular thing, uh, the attack of Russia on Ukraine is not justified on moral grounds. I mean, like, there can, they can have legal, uh, I mean like, you know, backing, they can have their own opinion, but like on moral grounds, it is not justified. That is one point. Now, I mean like when we talk about why this particular thing was in news, because under that particular agreement, the International Space Station, see, like we have seen that USA has put sanctions on Russia. Other countries have put sanctions on Russia. Russia was taken away from the SWIFT network also, right? So now what has happened? The Russia, I mean like, you know, Russia was earlier, means it is still under agreement under International Space Station. And this year, they had to send people, I mean like astronauts of USA, of Russia to International Space Station. Although they are at, I mean like, you know, like what we say, loggerheads related to this particular Ukraine, Ukraine, Russia thing. But still Russia has went ahead with this, this particular thing. I mean like, you know. So a lot of things are there. So that's how things are in news. You should learn the things from their basics, okay? So that you can connect. That connectivity makes, uh, makes the thing important, okay? How biotechnology helped to improve the living standard of farmers, 2019. Given account of the growth and development of nuclear science and technology in India. What are the advantage of a fast breeder nuclear program in India? Okay, so these are the things that are in news. This is this was in news that year. Yeah. How the government of India protecting traditional knowledge of medicine from patenting by pharmaceutical companies? Okay. We do have traditional knowledge and digital library. Okay, so TKDL we we talk about this particular thing. Right. A uh, lot of things, basmati rice is there, haldi is there, I mean like, you know, there are various agricultural products, there are various, various medicinal products, I mean like, although the uh, people, I mean tri uh, tribal people have the uh, knowledge about like what, how this particular medicine can be used, but like they do not have the know-how to make it, what we say, uh, produce it at commercial level. But the thing is, these, uh, you know, like foreign companies, they are coming here, they are utilizing the traditional knowledge and for their own benefit. And at the same time, they are not sharing the benefits also with the uh, common people. So if you learn about, you know, different conventions, like under different conventions, it is mentioned that like, you know, if you are utilizing the product, I mean, like uh, of, from certain region, you should uh, give, give them back to the society also. Right? There are different conventions also. So, like, uh, if you just um, uh, learn about, you know, different laws, like we do have uh, this particular thing, Tribal Rights Act 2006. We do have, you know, various laws also, various international conventions that talk about that the local community should also get benefited out of this thing, okay? So, that's how these things are connected. Means like you can learn about any year, Discuss the work of Bose Einstein statistics done by Professor Satendra Nath Bose and show how it revolutionized the field of physics. This can be connected with achievement of Indians in the field of science and technology. Okay, 
Bose Einstein relationship means like, you know, uh, so if you go back, if you read, you will come across like, you know, the, the Bose Einstein equation is also there, okay? So I guess it is related to means like, although I, I'm not uh, able to recall. Bose yeah. Einstein yeah, uh, Bose Einstein uh, condensate. So that is there, okay? So uh, this is one thing. Why is there so much activity in the field of biotechnology in our country? How has this activity benefited in the field of biopharma? Okay. So 2018, that time, I mean, like, you know, biotechnology was uh, in news because it's still biotechnology is in news because, like, you know, we have collaborated with international organizations related to genome also. I mean, like, you know, human genome project. So we do have, you know, different uh, projects like that. So if you read any question of previous years, you will be able to connect each and every question with the basic syllabus that, uh, that UPSC has given. So that's how you should read. Means like, if you are reading a current affair, if you are reading a current affair article also, you should not only read that article, you should try to link it with the syllabus. Like how it is connected with the syllabus, so that like you can link it with other areas also. And if UPSC asks a question, you can, you know, give your genuine points. I mean, like, you know, many students have this particular understanding that, like, if I read this book, that book, that book, I'll be able to reproduce. It's not about this thing. It's about how you process the information. Okay? It's about, it's not only reproduce, uh, production of the information, it's about how you process the information and how you reproduce according to the context. Which is, every question is framed in a different context and you have to write an answer to match that particular context itself, okay? So we can see any question like that. So I hope you have understood about like what is the utility of science and technology for us as citizens of India. And at, at the same time, we have understood like why it is expected for you people to learn science and technology so that like you can be leader, right? In your field. Sir? Yes. How many classes do you Related to uh, science and technology, I guess 14 to 15 lectures will be there. Uh, we do have a faculty. His name is Tufel Nurani, sir. So he will be coming and taking classes. He has been taking science and tech classes for uh, many years. I mean, like he is a faculty of science and technology. Okay. So he comes from you know some other state. So that's why for orientation session. So we did not. I mean, like you know, invite him. I mean, like that time. He will come, he will stay, and he will take classes. So, like, I am taking classes on his behalf, okay? So, whenever, I mean, our faculty is not there uh, for something, so I'll be there, okay? So, that's how, <coughs> so, uh, this, is, this is how you should learn. I mean, like, read the syllabus, understand each and every topic in the syllabus, read the previous year questions, then you connect with the previous year question, and, like, you will be in a better position to, uh, you know, understand and answer those questions. Don't expect UPSC to be, you know, asking questions from the resource that you are reading. UPSC is not getting inspired by you. It is inspired by its previous year questions, its syllabus, what is happening in the country and around the world. Okay? So that's how they frame the question and we should also make our strategy in that manner. So now uh, we will talk about Okay, now we will talk about, okay, so first part of the discussion is over from my side. Any question related to science and technology, you can ask me or see. For science and technology also at the later part, right, at the later part, you have just joined the batch. I mean like later part, we will have the pre, uh, like prelims test series also. There will be a dedicated test series and uh, there will be a dedicated week for science and technology, okay? So one orientation session followed by everyday questions and their discussion and all. So you will learn about science and technology. It is one such area where there is no standard book. I mean like, you know, there's no single source that you follow this source and you will be able to answer all questions. It's not possible here in science and technology. You should be dynamic, you should learn the basics, syllabus, previous year question, current affairs, and you should connect all the things so that like you can answer, okay? It's little bit dynamic subject as compared to other standard subjects, okay? For many subjects, there can be one single standard source. If you follow that, like you will develop some understanding, you will be able to apply for answering questions, but here, 
you have to be dynamic okay you have to dy uh, be dynamic you should read the basic sources you should read about some you know additional things also now let us discuss about editorial discussion classes sir, I have one question. yes yes one and half year for next year for next year prelims from now one year previous six months current affair you read okay. previous six months current affair and from now till the prelims you read yes it is important that you read the previous six months current affair so that you understand what has been happening so far and all the classes that are going to be taken in future so you will be able to connect with the content of the classes with the current affairs that's happening okay so that's how previous six months and coming one year so that will be sufficient i'm going to discuss about that portion now okay so let's start the discussion so we will talk about the current affairs <coughs> So how do we current, uh, cover current affairs at Lukman IS? Okay, so we do have three-fold strategy for current affairs. On one part, we are giving, you know, utmost importance to the Hindu newspaper. Okay. The Hindu newspaper. And for this, the Hindu newspaper analysis is being taken every day. Okay. The Hindu newspaper analysis is being taken every day by Lakshmi Khan Jebhe sir at 10 a.m. So at 10 a.m. So we are having the Hindu newspaper analysis live. Means it is live on YouTube, it is through Zoom and it is offline as well. So those students who have already joined the batch, they can come here, they can attend the offline classes. If they have question, they can ask the question from the faculty. Then uh, online students, everyone will be getting the Zoom link also. And for those students who have not joined any batch, they can also watch the Hindu newspaper through YouTube, okay? So that's one part. The Hindu newspaper is very important, okay? It is very important for UPSC preparation. Many questions come where like you will find that like, you know, there has been one or other article in the Hindu newspaper, okay? So that's why it is important. Apart from this, we have daily current affairs booklet. Yes, yes, daily current affairs booklet. This daily current affair booklet is uh, being uploaded in the blog of Lukman IS. Where is it uploaded? It is uploaded in the Lukman IS blog. If, yeah, if you visit the website of Lukman IS to the right corner, okay, you will see blog. If you click on that, you will come across the blog. And in the blog, there are multiple areas, okay. So one of the areas is uh, daily updates okay so there daily current affair booklet if you click you can download there we are also uploading daily current affair in the blog so you can directly go and read from there you don't need to uh, download if you don't want to yeah it will be different because Hindu newspaper is only dedicated for the Hindu newspaper article but if we talk, uh, talk about daily current affair booklet here they are framing current affair by focusing on multiple areas the Hindu newspaper Indian Express newspaper live mint the wire okay then economic times okay so there are multiple uh, like you know uh, sources that they are following for example press information bureau they are following multiple sources and they are compiling it and they are making the this particular thing booklet that, that seven to ten news articles every day Sir, who prepares it? we have a uh, content team so in the content team we have multiple people they are you know framing so that's the thing so every day you can read current affair from the blog you can visit the blog apart from this we also have monthly magazine yeah no uh, like it will be updated soon i mean like uh, some of the magazines are i mean those magazines content are made but the, but the thing is there was a person who used to set this thing in the form of booklet that because of some personal thing i mean like you know personal emergencies he has left 
but in place of him we have other person also that other person is working on other areas whenever he gets time he's forming so like we will be updating the recent ones also uh, last two three months uh, magazine uh, apart from uh, monthly magazine of current affair we have three types of monthly magazine in total one is monthly magazine of current affair second is monthly magazine of ethics okay we have monthly magazine of ethics you can download it from the blog of lukman is then like we have monthly magazine of public administration okay the perspective we call these magazines to be the perspective okay current affair ethics and public administration said, this will be sufficient. yes yes see like our preparation should not be heavily oriented on current affairs only right 70 percent of our preparation should be based on UPSC syllabus, previous year question and the static thing. 30% should be based on current affairs. This much current affairs yes, there? it is sufficient. Okay. Many people are heavily focusing on current affairs because like you know, there are multiple channels through which you come across current affairs, you read from there. But like what happens by the end of the day, you will uh, realize that 70-80% of your time you have devoted only on current affairs. So like there is a chance that you may miss the, I mean like you know, the basic fundamental concepts. So you should give, I mean more prominence, more importance to the, I mean key conceptual areas, then you should, you know, complement it with current affairs. Okay. So this is, uh, this is related to current affairs. Apart from this, okay, so uh, current affairs, monthly magazine, daily current affairs booklet, the Hindu newspaper, so they will be sufficient, I mean, for covering. Apa uh, so they will be for prelims and means integrated, okay. But like we do have another source that is, okay, editorial discussion classes. Sir, I have a question. Yes. Is that WSGP class? See, WSDP actually, it stands for Writing Skill Development Program. Earlier, we used to have our dedicated Writing Skill Development Program. But now, because of COVID-19, that has somehow, I mean, like, you know, got changed. People stopped writing regularly. So, we still, you know, provide newspaper articles. For example, like, you know, today, uh, let's consider there was a very good article. Okay. Means like our content team has recognized that this particular article is important for some portion of the syllabus. But like only if we only know that this is important and if it is not given to the students, so students will not be benefited. So what we started doing, we started, I mean like, you know, compiling. I mean, let's consider there are five important links. These links are important for some portion of the syllabus and they are for current affairs. One of the link may be from Press Information Bureau, other from The Wire, third from The Hindu, then Indian Express like that. So we give it in the form of WSDP. So it's, it's a single short document where like you have the name of the topic and link where it is mentioned, click here. If you click there, you will be taken to that link. Sir, so what we should prefer WSDP or that uh, earlier you said that See, you should, uh, you should focus on the current affairs. You should focus on the current affairs because these current affairs here, two level of work has already happened. One level of work is identifying the topic, important topic. Second level of work is like they have extracted the in important information from that topic for UPSC exam. So if you just, you know, follow this particular thing, you will have, I mean, two layers of work already done there. You just need to read to understand this thing, okay? WSDP, there you are only getting the raw source, raw link, so that like you read the thing and only understand, okay? You read the original source. So both the things are important. Whenever you are getting time for WSDP, you read it. Otherwise, you should make a habit of reading daily current affairs. Yes. So this, this is there, but the most important one is editorial discussion okay ed class why ed class let me tell you so let's consider you're reading on daily basis current affair from the hindu from this source that source okay so you have been reading you know what are the topics in news right you know the basic thing like this topic is in news that topic is in news but the thing is like has any work been done for you a compilation of those resources i mean like on a weekly basis where in-depth analysis is there 
if you see any ED booklet, okay, any ED booklet means like, let me tell you the schedule of ED, then I will talk about ED booklet, okay. So what happens for ED classes, we are conducting ED classes every Sunday, okay. Every Sunday we are conducting one class of ED from 5 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. How many class? One class. Every Sunday, from 5 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Means like you can come here, you can attend offline, you can be online on Zoom, you can attend the class, right? So this can be offline also? Offline and online, both mode, okay. So it is one class, two and a half hour, once in a week. For example, this week because of, uh, you know, your, uh, some personal, what we say, uh, commitments or some other thing, you were not able to follow the Hindu newspaper analysis. What you will try to do, next week you will try to attend this uh, missed lecture that missed, you know, the Hindu, somehow that get mix, uh, missed out. But this ED booklet within two and a half hours will give you in-depth analysis of all the important topics that were in news from means point of view. Especially articles. Yes, from means point of view. Means like here all the topics, let's consider, uh, means like generally five to eight topics are taken per week. These topics, like here we do highly, you know, high level of research and every topic is made in, in a very comprehensive manner so that after you read the topic, you know about, you know, all the kind of linkages of that topic for the means exam, okay? The topics are picked up from the Hindu literature or from... From any source, any source, any reliable source, which is considered to be a potential topic for the means exam. Main idea is we find out that topic which has high probability of coming in the mains exam. Then we do analysis from different sources related to that topic. We compile it in such a manner so that like after reading you will have holistic understanding. Okay. So in this class, the class that will be taken by a faculty. So in, in this two and a half hours class, the faculty is going to discuss five to eight topics in detail with you. They will talk about each and every, you know, portion of that particular topic so that you know about that topic in depth and anything that is asked related to that topic, you will be in a position to answer. Not only the class is conducted, we also provide a ED booklet, okay? You will receive a ED booklet every week. So hard copy. Hard copy. Okay. Those students who are online, they will receive soft copy. All of you will have access to a student's portal. In that student's portal, the ED booklet is uploaded. You can download the ED booklet, okay? So let's consider today is Sunday. Today you are attending class. While you come for class, you will receive the ED booklet. Then you attend class. During class, you won't be able to read, the, uh, read from the booklet. But you will be able to understand all these topics from the class. And later on next week, I mean from Monday to Saturday, you go through each and every topic, like one day, one topic if you read, you will be able to cover all the topics. So you will have a revision also. The class happened, you did the revision. Then next Saturday, what will happen next Saturday, we conduct an ED based test. Okay, we conduct ED, we conduct an ED based test. Of previous week. Of previous week. This Sunday class happened, next Saturday test will happen of the topics that are taught this week, of the booklet that you have received. Okay. Means like you, you uh, attend the class, you get the booklet, you revise, then you attend the, uh, this particular ED based test. So through this ED based test, you will have your writing skills. You know, it will gradually develop over the year. See five to seven topics every week, multiplied by 52 week, you will have so many topics. Sometimes before prelims, like, you know, this will be on hold for 15 to 20 days before the examination only, then it will be, you know, continued like that. ED booklets are one of the flagship, you know, topics that Lukman IS produces, okay. It is one of the most important resource. You should attend all the ED classes. You should read all the topics in the ED booklet, okay. You can see, like, after the class, you can visit the reception. You can ask them to share some sample ED booklets. Yeah, so those ED topics are highly researched topics. They are very important for the means exam. And these ED classes are taken by different faculties, okay? Like, uh, so 
uh, every week there will be one faculty on a rotation basis. For example, one week uh, it is Lakshmi Khan Jeb hai. In some week there will be Abhijit Jha sir. In some week uh, there can be Ansari sir. In some week Mr. Raghu Ramakrishnan can be there. If uh, none of them are available, I can be uh, there in, in one week, okay? I also take ED classes, okay? So that's how means like, you know, uh, you will be having the ED classes, okay? So every week there will be one faculty or other faculty. They're going to discuss in detail, okay? So that's how this ED topic, I mean like, you know, this is above all the current affairs that you're reading. All the current affairs that you're reading, this is, uh, take this on our priority because this is going to shape your idea for the means exam and many a times, questions in prelims also come from these topics. Why? Because the nature of question that UPSC is asking, it is very analytical. It requires you to have already done some thorough analysis on that topic so that you can answer conceptual areas, factual areas, and other areas. Sir, nearly 300 articles in a year. Yeah, maybe, means like you can multiply yeah. like that. And like, this is a very important thing, okay? So you should read about. Uh, uh, these ED topics. Sir, we will get that uh, Zoom link also this? Yes. Sir, so everybody will get it? Everybody, every student who has joined the classes, they will get all the Zoom link. They will be able to come and attend offline classes also. So all classes that are happening, for all classes you are going to get Zoom link. If in case you don't receive Zoom link on a particular week, on a particular day, you can give us a call on the reception and the reception people are going to share you the link. Sometimes it may happen that like one of the email got bounced like that, okay? Or while taking admission, you may have given your email rightly. They, have, they may have noted it down incorrectly. Some letter might have got missed. It may happen. So for any such things, you be in touch, you give a call, and they will help you out. So this is all related to ED, OK? So we have understood about ED, importance of ED, right? Current affairs, OK? And uh, you, you go to the website. So you will get one important, the login credential of a student's portal, OK? Sir, when will get? They, uh, they might have shared, or I will ask them to share. So within a day or two, means like today, tomorrow, you will get the uh, this particular thing. Students portal link. And in the student portal, for all classes that are going to happen for your batch, you will get the Zoom link there. Apart from that, all the PDF booklets associated with your class will be uploaded there. OK. Apart from this, like, uh, for example, prelims test series. It is completely online. It is uh, like it will be available there also. And uh, for video lectures, the lectures that are uh, that we are taking, I mean, like these lectures are recorded for video lecture. There is another, you know, like video portal also. Sir, so, then, uh, they will post Lukman IS app as well. App as well, yes. In app, you will get the video. In students portal, you will get the PDF and Zoom link, etc. Okay. So that app thing, it is video. It is there in the uh, that web version also. If you go to the website of Lukman IS. Top right corner, there is a button that says login. Only login is mentioned. You click on that, you will be taken to the video portal. As of now, video portal access has not yet been given. You will receive it soon uh, by the end of this week. Apart from this, I mean, like, you know, students portal is also there to the left of the login portal, a students portal. If you click on the students portal, there you will find. Uh, all the PDF, class links, notifications, everything there, okay? So any class that is happening, you will uh, receive a uh, email also on your email. So that email is automatically shooted from the student's portal that tomorrow you have a class. If there is a rescheduling of a particular class, you will get notified on your email. So email will be the primary form of communication, okay? Why? Because through messages, I mean, like, it is not as easy. Because like we have to get the, uh, uh, you know, uh, DLT, that is known as DLT, uh, like clearance from try for sending messages. So that uh, gets delayed. So like, you know, we don't do it uh, through the messaging system. But email is important. All of you should, you know, regularly keep a track of your email. Whenever you think you want to change, change the email ID, maybe for personal reason, you can contact us. We, we will do the, uh, that change. Okay. So any question for me? OK. So that's all from my side today. OK, thank you so much thank for you. attending the session. And if you have any follow-up question, you can give us a call on the reception uh, team.
and they will contact me and like you know I'll be there okay thank you